So that's the definition of features in log linear models. Again, we're assuming we have m features, f sub k, for k equals 1 to m. Each fe feature maps an xy pair to some real value. That value is very often 0 or 1 in the context of natural language processing problems. So in addition to features, we are going to define parameter vectors. These are the second key component in log linear models. So if we have m features, we're going to assume that we have a parameter vector, which is also of dimension m. And so here I use r to the m to refer to the space of all possible m-dimensional real valued um, vectors. Okay. So for example, if we have m features, sorry, for example, if we have m equals four features, then our parameter vector will be some vector consisting of four real values. Each of these values might be any value in the reals, any positive or negative value or zero. So given a feature vector f and a parameter vector v, we can map any xy pair to what we'll call a score, uh, what we'll call a score, which again is some value which could be positive or negative. And we do this simply by computing the inner product between v and the feature vector f x y. So I use this dot here to refer to the inner product or, or dot product between these two vectors. A little more explicitly. What this means is we sum from k equals 1 to m, we multiply in v sub k times f sub k, and we just sum these terms. Okay, so if I hand you an xy pair, you can compute the score by first computing the values for the features, for each of these m features, and then computing this inner product simply by looking up the parameters and multiplying these by the, the various feature values. So the key question which follows from these definitions is how do we go from these scores to probabilities? We really want the, the probability of y given x. This could be any positive or negative value. It's certainly not necessarily between 0 and 1. Uh, it doesn't necessarily form a well-formed distribution. For example, we want p, if we sum over y's, we want this to sum to 1. We want p y given x to be greater than or equal to 0. Clearly, we still have a bit of work to do in going from these scores, which can be arbitrary positive or negative values, to these probabilities. But we'll see there is a um, very appealing way of doing this, which is used within log linear models. So let's continue with the language modeling example to illustrate this idea. So in practice, what is going to happen is the following. Uh, we have some history, x which in this case is a sequence of previous words. And we want to go from x to a distribution, py given x, for uh, all y in our label set. Now, the first thing to realize is that under the definitions I've just given you, for each possible value of y, we can compute its score by taking the inner product of v with f applied to the context x conjoined with the label y. So if we think about, you know, again, we're trying to predict the, the distribution over the um, next word in this particular context. We can enumerate all possibilities here, so all labels in the set y. In this case, that's going to be the vocabulary of this particular language model we're interested in. And for each of these labels, we can compute this value, this score, and we'll see in a moment how we go from these scores to a distribution py given x. Intuitively, we'll see that higher scores mean that we'll end up with higher probabilities, and these items such as the here, which have lower scores, will end up with lower probabilities. So how do we do this? The key definition is going to be down here. 
So to, re to recap, we have some input domain x, a set of possible inputs, a label set y. Our aim is to provide a conditional probability y given x for any x in the input set and any y in the label set. Um, a feature is a function, sorry, f sub k, that takes an xy pair and returns some real value. We often have binary features which return 0 or 1. Um, we have a feature vector, fxy, which is going to be some m-dimensional vector. So it might, for example, be 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0 for any xy pair. And we have a parameter vector, which is some vector reals. So we might have something like this. And of course, these two vectors are the same dimension. We have as many parameters as we have features. And then we define the probability under our model as follows. So this can be read as the probability of y given x under parameter values v. So for a particular setting for these parameters v, we'll have a distribution of y given x. And of course, a little later, we'll see how we can actually estimate our parameter values v from actual training examples. So let's look at this definition. What do we do? Well, for our particular y that we're interested in, I can again calculate v dot fxy. And this is going to be some score. It could be positive or negative. OK. so. It's positive or negative, it's clearly not in any sense of probability. But we'll see through this transformation, which I show you here, we can turn these values into probabilities. So how do we do that? Well, firstly, if I exponentiate this, so I take the value of e and raise that to the power v dot f, this thing is now greater than 0. So we have a strictly positive value here and um, so in some sense we've gotten a little closer to probabilities and that we've at least gotten rid of negative values but more importantly if v dot f is a large value a large positive value this will be large if it's a large negative value this will be close to zero and in fact we can get this arbitrarily close to zero if we set this to be more and more negative let's look at the denominator of this definition so here I have a normalization term where I sum over all possible labels. So I sum over all possible values for y primed in my label set. And um, I calculate the score for each of these labels. And um, that is the denominator. So we have the ratio of these uh, two terms. This is a normalization constant sorry, a normalization term, which will, will ensure that we have a well-formed distribution. Okay, so it's easy enough to see that we have p of y given x under v is greater than zero because both the numerator and the denominator are um, strictly positive terms. Now let's look at what happens if we sum over all possible values of y. We want to ensure that this expression sums to 1. Okay, So let's look back at this. Say I sum over y in the set of all possible labels of the ratio of these two terms. It's easy enough to see that this is equal to 1 because I can bring the sum over here and I just have the ratio of two terms which are the same. So a, a little bit of algebra can verify that these two conditions are satisfied. So we've gone from scores, v dot f, which can be any value, positive or negative, to probabilities which satisfy these criteria that they're greater than zero and they sum to one. So these probabilities are uh, valid. Let's trace this through for how this works on the previous example, how this definition works. So say in this particular case, I want to calculate the probability of the word model given 
the current history x, which is the sentence under parameter values v. And the first thing I'll do is I'll calculate the score for every possible label y. So I have these scores. And I'm going to transform them using the definition I showed you on the previous slide. So the first thing I do is I take this score, and that's going to be the numerator, or at least e to that score is going to be the numerator, so e to the 5.6. And then on the denominator, I have a sum of terms as follows, e to the 5.6 plus e to the 1.5 plus e to the 4.5 plus e to the minus 3.2, and so on, and so on. To give another example, say we want to calculate the probability of the word the, given the context x under parameters v, that's going to be e to the minus 3.2 here. And actually, I'll have the same sum on the denominator, so the same normalization term. the sum of several terms for every possible term in the vocabulary there. You can see immediately that if the score for any particular word is large, this probability will be close to 1, at least if it's much larger than, than the other scores. And similarly, if a score is strongly negative, it in general is going to mean that the, the probability of the associated word is going to be close to 0.